Mark meets Peter Suter, the Chairman and Chief Creative Officer at TBWA. Hello Mark. Hello, um, thanks for inviting me in. Can you give us a quick summary of your career to date? Yeah, so I am a copywriter by profession. I spent about 20 years uh, at Abbott Mead, 10 of which I was the Executive Project Director. And then I bumped my head and wrote a series for ITV called Mary Single Other, and I left AMV and spent three years as a screenwriter, during which I made a bunch of stuff for Radio 4 as well, and I currently have a play on it at the Hampstead Theatre in London. But I got lonely, and I really like being amongst advertising people, so I'm back here at TVWA, hoping to turn it into the next biggest agency in the country after AMV. So, when did you get into advertising? What year was this, roughly? Uh, so, shoot, I'm not sure. Um, I graduated from Central St. Martins in 1986. And I got my first job at an agency called Delaney Fletcher Delaney. God bless his soul. And then I went to... Um, and was that as a junior writer? Yeah, really junior. I mean, basic T-boy allowed to type sometimes. Part of a creative team at the time? Yeah, I, uh, I went in with my partner, Lee Goulding, who uh, still uh, works in advertising. very good. Okay, so you worked your way up. Now yeah, I was, uh, it was, all I recommend to anybody is that um, take any job you can get. And although I love uh, Delaney's and uh, Delaney's went on to be very successful at the time, it wasn't a fantastically good agency. So I was quite good, quite quickly, and that's very good for your confidence. I recommend being good at a less good place rather than being like the worst in a brilliant place for a start. What, <laughs> what is it about TBWA? I mean, there have been so many amazing people that have, have, sure. have worked here and walked through the doors over the years. What sure. is it about this place? Okay, so oh, I came here because uh, they do Apple. And uh, Apple's the best company in the world. And although we have a, like, a very special cell that does Apple, it's very secretive and I'm not really allowed to play there. I still love being near something that uh, Steve Jobs touched. And Lee Clown, who is the global leader uh, creative leader of TWA is the person I think who made Lee Clow understand how to sell stuff. <laughs> so that's what cool to be around. What's the most embarrassing thing that's happened to you in your career so far? God, well I've done loads of really terrible adverts. Does that count? What's the ad that you're most embarrassed of? Well that's weird actually, isn't it? I, I, we, I was about to say I used to work on Lund Poly, get away. Um, but actually I'm not embarrassed about that because in a weird way it was sort of hard working quite funny. The stuff I'm embarrassed about, I can't even remember, do you know what I mean? It's just, everybody does stuff that's invisible. Here's a, I've got a bit of some numbers for you, okay, so um, uh, last year eight and a half billion pounds got spent on trying to get people to buy stuff, of which just under three percent was positively recalled, that means people remember it and they liked it. Just over seventy percent was negatively recalled, that means they remembered it but they fucking hate it. And not, just a tiny bit shy of ninety percent of it, which is seventeen billion pounds nobody took any notice of it at all just came and went yeah so we're all part of that but uh, the cool thing is to try and be in the 3% try and do stuff that people remember and like so is that what you tell your clients you say we've got a 3%, 3 yeah, yeah, chance of being memorable listen yeah I say don't you know this is a um, you know there's that uh, Lever Brothers quote you know 50% uh, of my advertising is wasted but I don't know which half oh, so generous that quote I think it's 97%. I don't want to be in the stuff that's remembered but not liked. So if a brand is if a brand's looking to spend £100 million on an ad campaign yeah. and there's only a 3% chance that it'll be remembered... You see, that's not how the maths works. Okay. Okay. Just because 3% of it gets remembered well, there's a 100% chance that it can be remembered well. Right? There are no rules that says it has to be shit. So there's a 100% chance that it could be well remembered and well liked. It depends what you buy. What's the best bit of career advice you've been given? So I did a lot of work with uh, the wonderful uh, Richard Curtis, who's my complete hero on every ground. He's a brilliant screenwriter and a brilliant human being. And his, uh, his little adage, which I've tried to live by, is if you want to make things happen, you have to make things. Okay, so if in doubt, do something. If in doubt, make something. Um, because there's too much chat. Like everybody chats instead of doing stuff. For you, what's the best thing about agency life? I really like the people. I know that sounds a, a, a sort of weird slightly lonely thing to say, but I really missed being around funny, inventive, odd people. And that's what agencies are full of, good agencies. <laughs> <laughs> a mixture of all of it. Yeah. Um, who inspires you creatively? Well, I admire Richard. Uh, I uh, went to work at Abbott Me because of David Abbott. I just thought he was brilliant. He used to, 
keep getting slightly analog at the story, but um, you used to be able to buy the Observer magazine on a Sunday, and the first ad would be for Sainsbury's, and the second ad would be for Volvo, and the third ad would be for The Economist. And I used to look at these three ads and think they were always fantastic, like they were a series, there'd be another one. And then I found that the same bloke wrote all of them. The same bloke wrote all of them, every week. And you know, Bridge Foster, a few other people there, helped out. And his ads were about... Uh, about kindness and giving people stuff and loving your wife and keeping your kids safe in a big car and feeding them good food and helping them be smarter with a magazine that you read. I just thought that was the coolest game in town. <laughs> so I, I did that. Um, obviously, you come from a copy background. How hands-on uh, with advertising copy are you these days? Well, it's weird, isn't it? I actually, strictly speaking, I come from a visual background, so I did graphic design at St Martin's. But I was the least literate out of me and Lee. I hope you won't mind me saying that, Lee. <laughs> so I became a writer. And I think it's really important to be a writer who loves pictures. So I think writing is very important. But I think in the end, if it looks horrible, it doesn't matter how good the writing is. So apart from the screenwriting and the stuff you do outside of work, how hands-on are you here at TBWA when it comes to the creative? Okay, so I haven't written anything here, um, which I think is important for now. So I think it's my job to lead and coach. Uh, also, I've hired people who are better than me. So Walter Campbell is the greatest advertising creative still working in the business, I think. So Walter's here. Sean Doyle, I think, is the best copywriter of our generation. It's the last 10 years, I think Sean is the best. I can make a case for Mary Weir and Tim Riley, but I think, I think Sean edges it. So why, why should I write when he's here? I just go, sure, that's great. And then we've done this deal where we've got Paul Belford to open his company, Paul Belford Limited, in our, on our ground floor. And Paul, I don't know, I mean, I know I'm, I'm a hyper bolic sort of person, but you tell me who's better than Paul. You can make a case of day die, maybe, 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 but I think Paul's the best. Ten pencils says he's the best. Walter Campbell's won 23 silver DNA pencils and three golds. What does being chief creative officer mean to you these days? Uh, uh, it means hiring great people and letting them do their stuff. And what do you think it means to them? Okay, well, I hope... Um, I've been uh, reading and rereading the biography of Steve Jobs. You know, clearly, a complicated man. You know, could be could be mean and take credit for things that he didn't do and all that kind of stuff. But also, like a brilliant, inspirational leader because he loved beautiful things. He, uh, my little thing for him is that he uh, loved beauty, and if it wasn't beautiful, he got ugly. <laughs> so I hope that the people that work for me think that I appreciate it when they do something that's beautifully art directed or beautifully written. And you often, can you be found on the shop floor working close yeah, yeah, to the creative? Yeah, so I'm sitting on the fifth floor. I've actually moved, when I got here, the correct people were on the third floor. I think correct people have got to be on top, so I've moved up to the top floor. You can't see, but uh, there's like 14 offices down there. I don't believe in open plan. <gasps> Scary. Most agencies go in open plan. God, That's interesting. Why. why don't you believe in I can't think plan? when people are yabbering. I can't think of a load of people are yabbering. I hate this thing where you see a team where both members of the team their headphones have on. noise cancelling headphones. How the fuck do they talk to each other? How do they talk to each other? If you, um, Bill Burnback, changed our industry by realising that you have to make the words and pictures work together to make a third thing that's better than either of them. And we've put everybody in open plan where they can't think and they can't talk. So all of your creators have got their own space, their own room here. Yeah, we've, uh, we have an interesting thing. So um, uh, uh, down there, so I built 14 glass offices and I was about to hang doors on them when I realised that actually it was a really lovely combination of enough privacy to be able to think, but if you took the doors off, you could hear and people could walk in and talk. So I have open door, closed plan. <laughs> yeah, so it's still approachable. People are still approachable. I hope so. Yeah, yeah. I hope that they can walk in and out. I mean, so, you know, Walter wants a door. I might have to get him a door. But I think it's a really good thing of... You can give up the body language of um, don't come in, can't you? Yeah. <laughs> but most of the time, you ought to be able to hear other people working, but not be able to hear what they're saying. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. Do you guys believe that an idea still can it, it kind of mainly be generated from a creative team? Yeah, yeah. I'm not sure that can be it, uh, generated from anywhere else. <laughs> because uh, different agencies uh, these days believe that an idea can be generated from... Uh, from either solo creatives or creative people at heart whether their day to day responsibilities are of a maybe creative producer here's the thing an idea is always two things that have been put together in somebody's brain right? so there's a little spark in the synapses and it makes a new thing but I think that you need someone else to say what do you think of that no that's shit what about if it's this it's building 
you know, when a team works really well together, and of course the team can, you know, sometimes there's somebody not there, sometimes there's a great planner in the room, whatever, but really I think it's a dance between two people, and those two people make a third person who's better than either of them, is what I believe. What's your favourite ad campaign of all time? Of all time, uh, I would say the Economist campaign. Just beautiful writing that makes you want to be part of the club. There's one of David's early lines was, would you like to sit next to you at dinner? Okay, so that's, an, that's a piece of paper with seven words on it and a logo that asks you who you are and whether you're interesting, whether what you say is compelling. I looked at that ad and it made me not only really buy the economist book, but also read it <laughs> and try and work out if I, was, if I knew stuff. So that's a piece of paper that makes you think about who you are and gets right into your soul, brings it out and says, are you boring? Are you a boring human being? <laughs> you know? um, so yeah, I don't think you can be that. What's the best brand you've had the pleasure of working on so far? Well, okay, Apple. It, it, I haven't really been able to get near it yet, but Apple's the, the, the greatest brand I've been allowed to be vaguely near. It's the greatest brand in the world, the greatest brand of all time. Do, do the agencies still get you to uh, sign NDAs uh, around the Apple work? Uh, they, more than that. So there's a, there's a build, separate building. Um, the creative director there is a guy who used to work for me called Ben Kay, very, very bright boy. And you have to have a fingerprint and eye recognition to get in there. And when I have my eyes lasered, I couldn't get in anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so I'm not allowed to anywhere near it, but I'm going to find a way. That is find a way. That is so good. <laughs> Let's move on to a quick fire round. Can line or DNA D pencil? Uh, DNA D. Olympic gold medal or an Oscar? Oscar. The brightest person you've worked with? Uh, Richard Kinsis. The most creative person you've worked with? Dave Gavin. The best looking person you've worked with? <laughs> uh, okay, I did. Well, I did a commercial with Cindy Crawford and Linda Angelista. Sydney, much, much nicer. Linda Angelista, horrible woman. <laughs> Sydney, so beautiful. God, life's difficult, isn't it? <laughs> Creatives or suits? Creatives. Money or happiness? Happiness. Apple or Android? Apple. Tea or coffee? Tea. Football or rugby? Football. Facebook or Twitter? Uh, Facebook. Facebook. Ant or deck? And, and deck. I like deck. <laughs> the, sm- the smaller one. The little one, yeah. Simpsons or Family Guy? Simpsons. Degree or no degree? No degree. Apple or Android? Apple. Art directors or copywriters? I'd say art directors, actually. Interesting. Yeah. Very interesting. Yeah. Retained work or pitch work? Uh, sorry, say that again. I think Retained I... work or pitch work? I still didn't catch the first word. Retained. What does that mean? Clients that are paying you on a retainer. Oh, well, yeah, people are paying you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, pitch work's fun, but you've got to work for the people that are paying you. Web or mobile? Uh, I would say mobile. Independent agencies or networked agencies? Networks! Lifelong networker. <laughs> outsource production or on site production? I think outsource still because I like people who are independent, so you want to be Don Draper or Roger Sterling? Don Draper. And lastly, twist or stick? Always twist. Thank you very much.